400 million miles away from Earth is Jupiter, the largest planet in our solar system. A giant ball of gas with zones and belts swirling in different directions and persistent storms twice the size of the Earth. Jupiter is like a mini solar system into itself. It has more than 60 moons going around it. Four big Galilean moons that were discovered by Galileo in the 1600s. It's a giant ball of gas swirling around. NASA's next mission to Jupiter, Juno, launches in August of 2011 and will journey five years before arriving at the gas giant in 2016. Juno's main science goals are to understand the origin of Jupiter, how it formed and how it evolved, and what role it played in the formation of the rest of our solar system. Juno gets its name from the wife of Jupiter. In ancient Greek mythology, Jupiter was behaving badly and had hid himself with a veil of clouds. And his wife Juno came down from Mount Olympus and used her special powers to see right through the clouds and see Jupiter's true nature. And that's just what our spacecraft does. One of Juno's main science objectives is to characterize the amount and source of water on Jupiter. It's an important question because the history of water across our solar system is very important to the formation of Earth and life itself. All life that we know of on the Earth needs water. In fact, wherever there's water, there's life. But we don't know where our water came from. Jupiter likely formed first in the solar system. And so how, how it got its water will give us clues as to how we got our water. Another major science goal is to virtually unwrap Jupiter, to discover if there is a heavy, solid core beneath its swirling, colorful facade. The way Juno determines whether there's a solid core in the center of Jupiter is by carefully measuring its gravity field. We do that with something called Doppler. The spacecraft gets pulled and pushed by Jupiter's gravity field, and we can sense that through the communication system back to Earth. Juno will also characterize Jupiter's massive magnetic and gravity fields to better understand their structure and how they were formed. In many ways, Jupiter is sort of our guardian here at Earth in that its gravity field is so big and it's so massive that comets and other things that are flying nearby that might come in and bombard us get actually caught up at Jupiter and flung out into the outer solar system. Other Juno instruments will study Jupiter's aurora, the most powerful aurora in the solar system. Jupiter's aurora are fundamentally different than Earth's. Jupiter's aurora are driven by its own rotation and the magnetosphere and the plasma that are surrounding Jupiter, whereas Earth's aurora are driven by the sun and our interaction with the solar wind. The impetus for Juno began with NASA's highly successful Cassini mission to Saturn. Years ago, when Cassini was flying past Jupiter, we used its big antenna to map out Jupiter's radiation belts. And that observation gave us the idea of how to do Juno. What's amazing about getting this idea of Juno through Cassini was that we used scientists that observed the radiation belts in the magnetosphere to help us figure out how to look at the atmosphere and eventually understand the origin of Jupiter. This multidisciplinary team carefully designed Juno and its nine scientific instruments to meet the technical challenges of the mission, weak sunlight, extreme temperatures, and intense radiation to study the gas giant and how it formed. It's really exciting to be part of Juno because it's asking such fundamental questions. Who are we? Where did we come from? How did the solar system come into being? Jupiter's got the first clues for us. And from Juno, we're going to go learn about Jupiter so we can start to put together the pieces of how the solar system was made.